the only one on the computer. They're probably going to be walking around. Yeah, and we'll just do the best we can with, um, okay. with uh, the uh, audio and stuff like that. I'll have to figure out. This room is supposed to have a Zoom setup. Uh, and we'll just do sharing your screen. Yes. Yeah. 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 So if a student asks, uh, as requested that you open up with a pun, delighted to meet you. I appreciate the request, though. <laughs> Pretty good showing. It is. We're at 100 and I think almost 15. Oh, I have the left hand right in the middle. I, I assume all different, like from the school in general, that not 
team new tune is all different levels. Oh, these are all, these are all part all of the program. Seniors. Okay. These are yeah. all uh, computer science or computer systems. Okay. Our program is 500 big right now. So this is good for them. Okay. Nice. And all these folks are part of the capstone project as well, or only yeah. some people do it? Everybody yeah. has to do it. Yeah, everybody has to do it. So five, it's like five person teams, it looks like. Uh, five, we try to we try to do four, that's very rare, yeah. so we hit about five. Five is the average. How do you, how do you group them together? Are they like all different made, or all different disciplines within the school? Because we have a different, few different majors, right? Yeah, we only have, so so our school is just, uh, SIDSI is computer science, computer systems, Industrial engineering and engineering management, uh, and informatics. But these classes are just my computer science and computer systems engineering. Okay, so they're all just like computer science. So those will be the people that are part of the staff uh, Yep. Okay. Yep. We have. Uh, we want to play with all the uh, do projects with all the other departments, but because everybody's caps on has different requirements, we're still trying to figure out the balance. We've had some small successes. But it, it requires a lot more hands-on project management and What's that? Right, and that, that's the experience we want to give. But like the logistics of that across the department, that you know. What time you need to be software? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? I think I think it's like the digital program. Mine was a digital program. You did other projects or other projects? I think I should develop on this. I don't know when we started I've been running, uh, I've been doing industry coordination for three years. Getting sourcing the industry projects for 400 students. It's been our biggest challenge, but at one point, we're so very excited to be working with the lawyers. It's very I think we're over 130. No, fewer and fewer FTCs. That will be awesome. That would not be hard to There's a lot of open studio libraries. Just uh, attach to that guy there. If I can figure out how to get him to work, a lot of this complicated part would, would be simplified. So. Yeah. 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 As soon as you get back to a yeah. faster Wi Fi. Yeah, I think it's the Wi Fi yeah. for sure. Sometimes I'm not sure, though. I think sometimes when we send things externally, that they get held up in some kind of. So it, it was saying safe mode. So I was like, yeah. something to do with our internal security. Yeah. yeah. Oh, me too. I was just thinking that. So the order is going to go, or, I mean, are you going to just. Are you going to do anything we should start? And then I'm just going to do you're a gonna say quick, something. You're going to say something. Yeah, I'm just going to do a real quick introduction. Uh, and, and you guys can walk off. All right, and then you're going to do an introduction. Talk to talk and speak for a minute. And then yeah, so. And then at the end, I just give it back to you, right? To close yeah, things out. Yeah, it'll, it'll come up with questions, and then I want them to ask you guys. And then after that, I'll do the whole, like, hey, if you're interested, do you want me to do the Oh, like our delivery centers and what we do? Um, it's up to you. I mean, I do it all. If you want to go through it, yes. You have a pitch that you can do. You can do it. I can, they can hear me last and mix this up. Okay. Cool. Okay.
couple minutes past for stragglers. sign-up sheet, but there should be an assignment on Canvas for you. Basically, just a one-paragraph summary of what you saw here today and why you think it's important, uh, and then um, you should be able to turn that in. If you don't see it, we'll be in contact with your instructor to make sure that that's up there and that you're counted uh, as you go through it. Cool. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our friends from Deloitte. We have Jade, Steve, Andy, and Alex, and without it's all you. Perfect. Can everyone hear me? Yes? Cool. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. We're really, really excited to be here and explain a little bit about Deloitte, U.S. Delivery Center, and then I brought some practitioners with me to explain a lot of what's going on day to day. So since we only have an hour, I'm just going to jump into it of what we're going to be going over. So I'll explain a little bit about who's Deloitte, who's the USDC, so the U.S. Delivery Center, um, and then they are going to be going over cloud engineering, some of the government and public services sector that we have here at Deloitte, and then some cloud engineering and smart cities. So, who are, who's all speaking, right? So let me introduce myself really fast. So my name is Jade Dingra. I am the Canvas Recruiter for Consulting for the U.S. Delivery Center in Gilbert, Arizona. So essentially what I'm here to do is to help mentor and figure out which opportunities are the right for you. Um, so I love that part of my job. I'm not here to force anything down your throat, but I'm here to give you opportunities. Without a doubt, I'll have introduced to the rest of the team as well. Um, hey, how are you? Andy Nape. I'm a senior system manager with uh, Deloitte here at our U.S. Blue Center in Gilbert. Um, and so I have responsibility for all of cloud engineering. Um, and then a couple of folks here with me that will be working with me and our uh, capstone team uh, throughout the semester. So they're here as well. I'm going to say that say hi. I'm Steve Porter. I'm a solution architect. I've been with uh, the way for three years. I've been in the cloud industry now for a while. Before that, I actually was an electrical engineer, so I've got kind of an interesting background of both engineering and uh, IT development. Hi, uh, I'm Alex Shin. I'm a solution analyst. Uh, my background is in software engineering. I uh, graduated from Polytechnic software engineering major, so I kind of understand what you're going through a little bit. And uh, I'm, I'm the low level that makes this stuff happen, so what they tell me to do, I do. Perfect. All right, so to start this off, raise your hand if you know who Deloitte is. Okay. What about, have you heard of USDC or US Delivery Center of Deloitte? Raise your hand. Some, okay, so we'll definitely go over that. Has anyone heard of consulting before? Okay, who is brave enough to explain what consulting is? I have some that I can take on, but I would love to volunteer. Anyone? What's consulting? What about you, Noah? Uh, I'd rather leave it up to anyone else first. <laughs> <laughs> anyone? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, it's like, uh, you're kind of 
kind of the intermediary between the, the software developers and the, the customer, and you communicate with the customer, and you figure out what the requirements are, and you know how to apply those to software. Yeah. It's a great example. So you're right on the nose. So consulting is essentially solving complex problems or questions to the client, right? So there's traditional consulting and there's consulting at US Delivery Center. But overall, what is Deloitte, right? Just so we're all starting in ground zero. Deloitte is the largest global professional services firm. So we provide services to our clients. Raise your hand if you've only known Deloitte as like big four or auditing firm. Done. So we're much, much bigger than that. We obviously have a lot more to offer. So we actually have four different sectors that we offer. So we have auditing, tax, advisory, and consulting. So consulting is obviously what we're really focusing on today. So um, let's switch over here. I guess I have enough screen over here. So that's Deloitte uh, in general. And then USCC, so as you see on the top right here, the US Delivery Center. So we have three centers that was essentially created to provide more technical depth to our clients. So the way that I like to explain it is that you're that liaison in between the business and that client. So we're really that onshore model of consulting. So it's a little bit more virtual. You're still client facing. You're still helping solve problems more on that technical base. Do you want to add anything to that? Um. No, well, maybe the only thing I would add is from a U.S. delivery center perspective, you know, as Jade mentioned, we provide a lot of technical resources. And so when she talks about consulting, and as you explained your kind of example, we have, you know, worldwide consulting teams that are out in the field, you know, interacting with our clients. And then from a delivery center perspective, we're really an extension of that team to scale up and build technology teams. So we kind of work with those teams. Um, Made the big difference for a delivery center is uh, we don't have to get on airplanes all the time and you know have a uh, you know a much better work life balance. So that's kind of my pitch for the delivery center and what we yeah. do. But yeah, so the work life balance, the flexibility is a huge push for the USCC or the US delivery center. I'll, we'll be using that interchangeably. Um, but just like you mentioned, that work life balance. And then up on the screen, you see three pictures. So we have three USCC delivery centers. Um, first, we opened in Orlando, Florida in 2014, and then it was so successful, we opened it up in Cannesburg in 2016, and then finally, last but definitely not least, over in Gilbert, Arizona as well. So right on the 202 of Gilbert, on Gilbert. Awesome, beautiful, beautiful office. I love it just because it's very collaborative. I mean, you have your hands in on the projects and the people. There's a lot of leadership opportunities. I'll be honest, that's why I picked Deloitte, is the leadership opportunities as well. I'm sure they can seize on that as well. Um, and a little tidbit, if you do go through our interview as well, you can go into our office for final interview to interact with everyone and see the office too. So I know I explained it a lot. I have a video just to kind of encompass everything that I just spilled out onto you um, and for you to see a little bit of our leadership as well. Let's see if it works. <coughs> If it works. Oh no. <laughs> Any questions while we're letting it load about the USCC, about Deloitte in general, before we get into what they want to be talking about? No um, questions? Uh, has anyone ever seen, have you seen our name and then our logo and at the end of our name, um, there's kind of a green dot mm -hmm. so that's familiar to everybody. Does everybody know anything or anybody know why the, what the green dot stands for? No? Okay. Um, which isn't uncommon. When I joined the lid, I didn't know either. Um, so our green dot stands for, you know, bringing everything, bringing us all together from all kinds of disciplines and lines of thinking to kind of bring together everything that we can do you know, top to bottom for our client. Um, so the reason I bring that up, as we were mentioned, delivery centers, we did talk a lot about technology resources. Um, what's super cool about our Gilbert location is that it will be a true, uh, what we call a green dot location, where we will actually have 
all of our technology folks, but as well as tax and audit and advisory, all you know, in well now two buildings, maybe even three, but you know, kind of creating that campus of you know where we can do that and really bring a you know a green dot solution together in one one place. So kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Let's see if this works. If not, we can go to it. Back in 2014, we established our real space delivery center so that we could serve our clients with a lot more agility, a lot more nimbleness, and technical depth. First couple of weeks were very exciting, uh, somewhat chaotic. I can remember two of us uh, sitting on the floor before we had furniture. Even in those early days, there was a focus on ensuring that we developed and ascended the right culture. We've had a four-year plan to get to a thousand folks in this location. Uh, we actually ended up doing a year and a half. And so we had to find and attract very high talent individuals to come here and work and help us grow at that rapid pace. What the delivery centers enable us to do is to attract a workforce that wants to do the same kind of exciting work that our core consultants do on site, but they don't necessarily want to do the consistent travel. I have two boys who are very involved in sports, so I need to get them to uh, currently track for soccer practice. Um, so I just make that a priority, and if we have to work around it, we just work around it. And um, projects have always been flexible to move from an environment that was very cubicle oriented to a very different place here, being collaborative and being able to stand up and not have to go very far to ask somebody a question. You don't feel intimidated. It feels more natural. The co-location of 1,100 people at one at one place, we were able to share knowledge more effectively across teams. When we run into an issue on one project, typically another project has been able to solve that. You did kind of have that small company environment feel, but also having the resources of a large corporation, and just it kind of feels like a little startup. One of the market shifts that we're noticing was a move towards uh, technology enablement and robotic process automation. We scaled in the last year and a half to two years to roughly 100 resources from zero. It took a lot of ambiguity and figuring stuff out along the way, but uh, really eager folks that have been willing to learn and grow and make it happen. Technology is evolving so fast, and our ability to actually find uh, talented resources and be able to provide that for clients in a cost effective way is a is a differentiator. So what we got shines a light a little bit about who Leadersuit is, some of our leadership that you just saw. Um, I know I want to hand it over to Andy to explain a little bit about what he was named Bucket of Cloud. Um, at the end, if there is time, I'll go over some of our opportunities. I know I handed out, or we had a helper hand out um, that flyer to you. That will be explained later, so don't worry about it. But I'll switch it over to Andy. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, a little more about what we do. Of course, I'm going to focus on cloud engineering um, for kind of the remainder, and then we're going to get into a little bit about um, government and public services. Um, so we do a lot of commercial work and then a lot of pub government public services. So that's kind of how we're divided. I'm going to spend our time talking about um, uh, what we do in uh, government public services, because uh, that's what me and my team do for the most part we focus on. And then we're kind of going to get into a little bit of how that's how we're working with customers in that space um, to uh, you know focus on smart city concepts, and that's actually what our capstone project is about. So we're going to kind of keep that theme going here. Um, whoops, go back one. Um, so from a cloud engineering perspective, when I joined Deloitte, um, I've been a consultant a long time, but when I joined up the delivery center, they asked me what I wanted to do, and so my choice was oh, well, I want to focus on cloud engineering um, because I'm a firm believer that all of engineering and technology work is ultimately going to go down that cloud space. We're not doing it yet. We will, right? Um, and we see that through all our disciplines. So I kind of wanted to be in the heart of you know, innovation and doing cool work. So that's kind of where I decided to focus. So when we talk about cloud engineering um, at Deloitte or within the delivery center, kind of focus on a few things. One is cloud native. 
Um, and that's everything from designing and building custom applications on the cloud platforms, whether that's AWS, Azure, or uh, the Google Cloud Platform, um, leveraging native services to build uh, cool systems. Um, the other way we look at cloud native is infrastructure automation. Right? So building the cloud environments and foundations that these applications will live and run on. Uh, the next thing we do is we have teams and folks that uh, focus specifically on cloud migration. So working with customers to take their on-premise systems and migrate those systems into the cloud. Ultimately, that, that does result in native cloud development because we still have to build the environment. So just a little bit of a different way of talking about it. The last thing we do is uh, cloud managed services. So we do have cloud engineering teams that then um, continue to own and operate those systems for our customers. Um, and so that'll be everything from day to day, excuse me, troubleshooting of tasks to um, new requirements. And it actually does involve you know, new build out. So again, kind of the same work, just a different way of talking about it. Um, a little bit more about us, just this is not just US Delivery Center, but just some numbers um, across Deloitte. Nationally, we are about 1,200 strong. Um, we continue to focus on um, continuing education. So learning and development at Deloitte is a big thing in general, uh, but helping our practitioners join and get certified in the cloud if they're not already. So um, that, of course, helps us with our work, helps us do things um, the right way professionally, and also builds our relationships with you know, AWS, Azure, and those other folks. Um, this one's a little bit AWS focused, so we, again, we do do Azure work and um, we're trying to do more and more on the Google Cloud Platform. That really just depends on our customers what they use. Uh, we've got lots of um, certified competencies and kind of all the things that uh, gives you a perspective right, of what you guys could do. Um, and then kind of to end this before I get into government and public services, um, kind of bringing it back to you all and why it might be relevant, right? These are the types of majors and focuses that you all have. So kind of reiterating that, you know, whether it's engineering or cloud engineering, um, it's pretty relevant to what you do. We have other groups like strategy and analytics that, that focus a little more on the analytics, business intelligence, AI, things like that. But from a cloud perspective, it's all starting to kind of run together. Um, so kind of before I move on, is there any, any questions, thoughts, anything? Uh, so kind of for cybersecurity specifically, cloud services are kind of new and there's a bunch of yeah. new stuff, things that they're learning about it. Um, do you guys kind of help people grow and learn about that or are you guys kind of looking for experienced yeah. individuals? Yeah, it's a good question. So the answer is yes to all of that. Um, experience is great. Um, we also, of course, recruit and, and hire for those things. Um, within our group, we have, um, when I talked about kind of being a green dot location, we have a group called advisory. Um, and our advisory group, a lot of times, will focus a lot on the cybersecurity stuff, meaning they'll work with clients to educate them on, on cybersecurity risks, um, what those requirements are, and then they kind of give it to us from an engineering team. So we work very closely together with them. And then when we talk about, um, and from an engineering perspective, what my team does is we will set it up and configure it, right? So we'll set up the right roles and privileges, make sure that we you know, architect things to make sure we're meeting cybersecurity requirements. Um, but yeah, it's super important, right? Because it's a, it's a big, you know, there's a ton of hackers out there. We work with a lot of government agencies, so federal, state, and local, and all those systems are constantly getting hacked. So we definitely have to be able to demonstrate if we're gonna take systems to the cloud and or build new systems in the cloud that we are, we are you know, front and foremost thinking about cybersecurity and how we do that. Thank you. Yeah. Any others? You know, all the way in the back? Yeah. Why does the Lloyd have such an interest in IoT and how do you plan to enter that market specifically? Yeah, good question. Um, so IoT um, also, of course, powered by the cloud, right? So in my opinion, cloud made that possible. Um, that's that's the interest. So um, I'm actually gonna get into it a little bit more later when we talk about smart cities and governments. Again, I'm gonna talk, there's all kinds of applications, as you know, from commercial to everything. But keeping it to our topic. Um, in the government public services space, when we talk about the idea of smart cities and how we enable them, it's a ton of that. It's about IoT, you know, traffic sensors or sensors in anything, and how you collect data around how people, mobility, how people move around cities, all of those types of things. So that's kind of an example of how we're interested in. Big picture, we're interested in any any way that our clients uh, are going to you know use it to be innovative um, and drive products to market or enhance. What is, um, what is Deloitte going to do about it? Um, 
So uh, afterwards, if you're really interested, you can talk to this guy. So Steven down here is on my team. Um, he, he had worked at uh, uh, Microchip, which if you're not familiar is a you know software and hard, you know hardware. Um, and he actually was uh, instrumental um, years ago working with AWS to kind of work through some of their IoT services. Um, so it's an example of our practitioners. Um, Knowing the technology, knowing how to use it, knowing how to help our clients uh, bring their vision um, to life. I'm actually in conversations with the city of Gilbert, right, where we live, part being part of our community, on how they're going to use their IoT-enabled traffic lights, which they have. And most cities do, right, when they stand up new ones, but they don't use the technology right now to do anything with it. So the idea is, well, how do we work with our customers to say, okay, we have this capability, but how do you do it? Kind of answer your question. It's kind of a broad, broad question, but okay. <laughs> Any others? Okay. Okay. Moving on. Um, so, talking about cloud engineering and how it's changing things, right? So, the first statement um, about computers um, not doing a lot and just rendering graphics and processing information. Okay, they do a lot more now. So every year, right? That's kind of what it did when I came out of college, for sure. Right, websites. So they are getting more and more advanced. But what's more important is the bottom part and the fact that um, cloud really is, uh, cloud technology, cloud engineering is really enabling all these things, right? So we can build systems faster, cheaper. Um, you know, when I was out of school, we used to have these big teams of like 20, 40 people to build systems. And now I see us doing it with like an agile scrum team of like five, five, uh, five people well rounded. I mean, using cloud technology, we can knock out systems in months that in the past used to take years. Um, so really it's changing things, it's changing a lot of stuff. Um, the Internet of Things, so you asked about it, right? It's uh, starting to become you know, the center of a lot of conversations, whether you know that's in retail or appliances or government, as I mentioned. So what are the applications? Um, I didn't even bring up, uh, I'll bring it up later, but uh, autonomous vehicles, all those concepts, right? It's really the center of IoT. Um, data processing, of course, and business intelligence, right? So all these concepts around BI and AI uh, were not really possible until, you know, true cloud services came to be and we could really process, you know, tons of data, and, you know, pump data into systems with services like Kinesis, things like that. And then um, cognitive computing. Um, it's funny, we were sitting upstairs in the cafe talking about the launch of Google Assistant. Right? And we were having a conversation around what's the difference between uh, you know, artificial intelligence and cognitive computing. Does anybody know, have a thought on what the difference is? What do we usually think about when we talk about AI or artificial intelligence? What's that? Skynet. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, does anyone know? Does anyone know what cognitive is? No. Yeah. While we talk about this, so. AI is interesting, right? It's it's uh, we see a lot of talk about it. We're starting to see it show up in things, right? Computers being more intelligent, being able to actually, right? My other statement around not just processing data, but starting to be able to be programmed to think through things. Um, so things like automated um, uh, telephone systems, things like that. So that's kind of artificial intelligence. Cognitive is actually behaving like a human being, so not just being able to be programmed to make decisions and process things and make human decisions, but actually acting, right? So the thing we were talking about was Google Assistant, and Alec, you should have brought up, you saw a demo where, um, you know, if you ever, has anyone seen the launch video for Google Assistant when they, they make the phone call out to a, uh, make a hairdressing appointment? Yes. People have seen it? Okay. So you actually, if you listen to that or Google that, you know, you can actually hear the voice where the, the voice takes pauses. Or as Alex said, you know, he was, he was seeing another demo where it actually took a deep breath or they'll sigh, right? So it's actually mimicking human behavior and making it very real, so. Um, cool. Any questions? Fairly, fairly straightforward, right? Cloud is gonna change that door, so. Um, that's probably where you wanna get your job. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm gonna get into a little bit around um, smart cities, smart technology. Of course, you know, it's kind of our theme, so that's what I'll talk about. There's so much with technology you could talk about, but. You know, how do we see, um, as we are, oh, okay, so we work with um, state and local governments. Uh, we do a lot of federal work, which of course we can't talk about, um, and then a lot of local work. So we even um, 
even again at the grassroots, you know, township level of Gilbert, Arizona, you know, we are meeting with the mayor and the city planner and talking about some of these concepts, right? So how can Gilbert, Arizona, you know, figure out how to use technology to manage mobility and traffic management, right? So you see it all the way at small cities, but all the way to the top. So I'm going to talk to a few examples, big cities, of course, that are doing some of these things. But traffic light data, uh, autonomous vehicles. So how are they going to start? And we, we in Arizona, right, have Google here. We have all kinds of stuff. We don't see those in other cities being tested here. So um, you know, how are, once those cars are rolled out across the nation, how are they going to start interacting and transmitting information? Right? And what are the options and possibilities? Uh, let's see, electric um, vehicle charging, autonomous shuttles, right? So when are we going to see not just cars, but actual mass transit options that are you know taking on the ground and things like that, replacing light rail stuff like that. Um, parking, so simple stuff, right? So parking management. How many people have a hard time finding a parking spot around here? Yeah, anyone wish they had an app that just said, you know, just show me where the nearest parking spot is because I gotta get to class. Yeah, just even things like that. So we we talk about that with the city of Gilbert. If I was there, one, you probably all spend most of your time in Tempe or Scottsdale, but in any of those places, downtown Gilbert has become very busy, right? If you want to go downtown Gilbert and and get a seat at a restaurant, it's really hard to get. So I would love, as a citizen, to just be able to pull up my you know city app. And say, hey, I want to, you know, go get a seat. And if they had cameras watching the streets and kind of taking a look at head counts and historical data, they could probably, we could probably predict if I left my house now, where would I get a parking spot availability, and how long would I have to wait to get a seat? And then if I could just say, hey, I'd like to do that, let's go, let me go ahead and put in a reservation, right, to do that. So that's kind of blending mobility. You know, camera technology as well as you know parking lot and historical data and predictive analytics all into solving a simple problem of how do I how do I not wait in line, right? Because that's the worst. We don't want to wait in line. Uh, safety and security. Um, so everybody's talking about these concepts, right? So public spaces, facial recognition. How can I maybe have a, a you know if I was a citizen, how could I you know be part of ASU, right? And come to campus and know that there's secure spaces. If I had kids. Can we go to a park and make and know that that, that whole barrier is secure, right? Because I've been pre-screened like CSA pre-check or something like that, and I can have more peace of mind that my kids can run freely within the park and not be scooped up. Um, so those were a lot of things people are talking about. Um, let's see, businesses, so payments, obviously, right? How can we unify payments across things and make it so we all have one card? Everybody's always talked about that. Everybody's got. How many cards do you all have just to like pay for things, right? Club cards, city cards, all these different cards, right? Can we get just one universal card that works? We're getting closer with like mobile payments, things like that. So you can pay with everything with your phone. Yeah, anyway. Um, other things like just doing business, right? How do cities and government agencies make it easier to do businesses? Um, even like uh, a lot of this stuff, by the way, applies to like smart campuses and something that's going on. I'm talking about smart cities, but um, there's even initiatives at ASU, right, to figure out how to make ASU a smart campus to, to make things easier. Um, so things like searching records, filling out applications. I mean, how many people have to fill out stuff all the time and re, you know, redo applications, submit your information all the time? Um, super annoying. So it'd be great just to like tap your card and here's all my info. It's great to submit. Uh, energy management, um, right? So if we all love the environment, which I'm sure we do. You know, how do we how do we use less energy? How do we use smart water systems, um, heating and cooling? So how do we just use our use smart technology uh, to use our resources better and uh, do all this? Um, okay, talk about most of this stuff. Uh, okay, so the other the other cool thing is um, as we're doing these things, I talk a lot about cloud, a lot about technology. You are all. Um, you know, engineering resources, but yeah, like the key is it's always not about technology, right? So as you guys do projects and, and think about the things you learn and how you're going to develop applications and systems, um, always be thinking about like who you're developing for and you know why, right? And how that's going to make that that process or that that thing better. So when we talk about smart cities and all the technology I've been talking about, it should really be centered on the citizen, right? So let's not do technology for technology's sake, but let's make citizens' lives better. 
Um, and so that's a big thing for governments um, because they're terrible at it, right? All of their systems are horrible. They don't look good, they don't process right, they're clunky, they're hard to use. Um, and so governments are starting to think through that and how they can do those things better. And those are kind of the things that we as a consulting firm help them do. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, any questions, thoughts, anything I can? Okay. Okay. So let's talk about some examples. So this is some of the cooler stuff um, around the uh, so I was looking for more and more examples of the U.S. Um, and we're terrible at it, right? So the reason I bring that up, I'm going to take you through some examples. None of these are going to be about um, cities in the United States. So, you know, as you guys all come out of university, you know, gun plays and looking for jobs, um, you know, one of the things I bring this up is because think broadly about whether it's a consulting firm or, um, you know, industry. We, when we say industry, we mean like, you know, um, non-government, or even the idea of working for governments, you know, whether it's state or local or city or things, they're, they're all thinking about these things. Um, so the jobs will be there, right? Um, it's an interesting way to go. So some of the cool things that are not happening in the U.S. that should be happening here. Um, so Google Sidewalk Labs, has anybody heard about this one? Read about it, heard about it, one over here. Um, yeah, super cool. So Google bought a um, big piece of land uh, next to the, um, what lake is it? Ontario Lake. Um, and for about a year or so, they've been soliciting feedback from the community and all these things. They just released their master plan on some of the stuff they're going to do. So they are going to build, you know, the intent is to build this whole district from the ground up with all smart technology and prove out a lot of these concepts that I'm talking about. Um, let's see, what else we got? Um, Seoul is one of the examples that will commonly show up, right? They're, uh, you know, they're, they're using IoT all across the city, sensors throughout, so they can collect mobility data, you know, um, climate data, all these things. So that really, all that pumps back into city planning, um, and that's the goal, right? So when, when I said before, it should be all about how to make citizens' lives better. You know, collect the data, not just collect data, right? This isn't about being big brother, or collecting data, or tracking people. In theory, it should be all about making people's lives better and more efficient and how we can do those things. So Seoul's kind of doing a lot of that. Um, they have the parking systems, which are great, right? They have that smartphone app I talked about, wish we had one, it'd be great. Um, surveillance cameras, this is where, I'm gonna talk about some of the issues in a minute. This is where people get, um, you know, twitchy about being on camera all the time and why are they tracking me? Do they know who I am? If I have a city card, do they know everything I'm doing, right? Um, so it kind of goes into a, technology, you know, ethics questions and all these things, but uh, we're doing it. Um, free public Wi-Fi, we all like that, high-speed Wi-Fi. Singapore, another great example. So they're, they're, they're killing it in the space. Um, they have that national identity, NDI, um, so everybody has one identity. Point is, right, once you have that and it works, you can do things a lot faster. Um, they're really focused on mobility and transportation. Um, they are rolling out smart applications, and so their rollout of smart applications is interesting because that last bullet, the next one that says where it shares data. So you know their their idea and culture of building this smart city is collect all the data and share it so that they can build partnerships um, with people who want to build apps, right? Um, now those people want to build the apps because they want to advertise, make money, but nonetheless they're building apps that that make life better for everybody and simpler and faster. Uh, Hong Kong is um, super cool. It's at the cutting edge. So there's a lot of stuff about Hong Kong too, but they have this Occupus card that's widely used for shopping. So again, that's that concept of we only have one card that works everywhere. Can we tie rewards programs to it? Can we integrate with businesses? How can how can they you know get you the coupons and deals and all those things that that you all might be interested in? Um, I think that's my last example, and then it's going to go into issues, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So what is everyone's thoughts? Who, um, so the issues and the problems with everything I'm talking about. What do you guys think? If you just lose your bus card, you're not losing much. But if your bus card is also your um, Visa card. Yeah. Right. You have one card, you lose it. Um, it's about as disastrous as losing your phone, right? Anybody ever lose their phone and your heart sinks? And you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the anxiety of feeling, yeah. So, how do you keep track of things? I think it 
comes back to like privacy and selling yourself as data. Right. Yeah. So why do you think? Um, so that's probably the number one. Why do you think the U.S. is terrible at this and privacy concerns? So nobody does anything because they're even the you know the city of Gilroy. We were going to do this whole project for free. We were going to demo all this stuff. It's going to be amazing. We were just interested because hey, we live, we work there. Let's do something together, and then for Deloitte, we'll show it off for you. You get some free software, it's going to be cool, but they have a ton of privacy concerns, right? Don't want to film people on the streets, even though it's legal, things like that. I'm thinking any vulnerabilities, if somebody can figure those out, um, and like say they targeted the transportation system, they could bring down the whole system, and then your city's at a standstill for who knows how long until they can get that back online. Yeah, so there's two things in there. One is cybersecurity, which we were talking about, which is getting access to information. How do you protect that? And right now you're trusting, you're trusting a state government, which is again why the U.S. is terrible at this. We don't trust our government. For probably good reason. Um, we don't really want them to have our data, right? We barely trust, we barely trust uh, commercial space and Apple and everybody who severely, constantly demonstrates that they not protect that data. So can the government really do it? Um, so maybe if they hire smart engineers, they can figure it out. Um, so that cybersecurity is a is a big problem, but yeah. You know, how many how many systems are connected and can they get through them? So that's a lot of what we do in the government and public sector space too, is every time we build a system, cybersecurity thing, but you know, where are the boundaries and how do we how do we ensure that you can't get from one system to the other? And that's actually the big fear with cloud again. Although although we're getting over it, right? In the last couple of years there was a fear, now it's not so much anymore. Although the recent Capital One breach did not help us one little bit. That was a killer. Um, what else? What other concerns? Okay. Just a few short steps from a system like this to a social credit system like China has and security involved. Yeah. So total control, they know everything, right? So yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a concern. How far does it go? Who said Skynet over here before? Really? Yeah. <laughs> So we all grew up, right? Terminator, Skynet, and it's, you know, it's like uh, when we grew up. Um, uh, well, we have Star Wars still. Everybody's still into that, but Star Trek, I think, has phased out a little bit. But you know, Star Trek and all these shows when we grew up were like, um, uh, what's the word? When, like a fortune teller. That's not the right word. Um, foreshadowing. That's that's a good one. But you know, all these things are coming true, right? Because we all saw them when we grew up, and now that we are engineers. I mean, those ideas of talking computers and interacting and AI, right, they've all just becoming true because we're making them true. But it's kind of cool that that's where it starts. Prophecy, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> what is prophecy? Um, but yeah, so how long is it before before the computers take over? Um, scary. I was, I was, how many people have, uh, I was telling a story actually sitting outside as well before this. Um, how many people have uh, seen or tried the Oculus? Yeah, well, that's a lot, right? That thing will blow your mind. My son got one, right? I had no idea. I put it on. I'm like, oh, it's uh, it's really scary, cool. Because if they could do that now, we're we're only we're only so far away from like Ready Player One, and there it is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Good ones. Um, I think that's probably most of the big ones. Oh, job killer. Um, so you guys hit most of them, right? Data protection. Um. Uh, um Barriers to vision, hearing, oh, uh, disabilities, right? So how far do we take technology where it becomes a problem for folks with disabilities and they can't interact or they can't use it? That's a real concern, right? Because government and uh, you know space and all these things has to work very well. So it's back to that. You know, really focused on the citizen, not just the technology. Um, corporate takeover we didn't really talk about, right? So kind of going back to the, the Google one. So yeah, super cool. Google bought a bunch of land. Um, but what are they doing, right? Like, is it really, is it really about the citizens, or what? You know, now they own all that land, and now they control it, and so it gets super awkward, right? Um, things like that. So it's big ethical dilemmas of who should be doing this? Should it be government? Should it be corporations? You know, there's got to be some middle ground partnership. Um, but what are their motivations, and why are they doing this? Uh, oh, job killers. Um, so how many people either are interested or work in the AI space, artificial intelligence, or hope to someday? Right. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of ethical concerns or questions around. Okay, if we automate everything, and we talk about robotics, we're actually most times talking about automation, right? 
automating things that humans do and people. Most people think robotics is generally about actual robots doing stuff, but it could be as simple as automating the process. But um, so there's questions, right? There's two sides to that fence. One is, um, well, it's going to take away jobs, but on the other, right, it's going to give engineers all kinds of jobs. So the question, um, and, and ideally you could say, well, it's bringing people up to do more productive work, which I agree with, as long as those people are, are educated and actually can, you know, have the ability to do more productive work um, versus menial tasks. So I think these are all things that we need to think about. Um, any others I didn't cover that you all have either heard or talked about? Okay. Um, let's see. So the major theme here is the bottom line, which I think is relevant for you all, is that um, the big thing is governments need to figure out how to build digitally savvy uh, workforces, um, much like we all do, but they are now coming around. Um, and I think uh, it's super surprising uh, in the federal space and the government. So I never worked in the government space or with, you know, uh, before I joined Lloyd, it was all, my whole career was on commercial um, and corporations and we do things fast, right? I worked for Apple and Disney and all these people. Um, and then I joined Deloitte and they said, hey, can you help us focus on our, our government and public sector business? And I said, oh, hmm. That doesn't sound very uh, interesting. Like, what are they doing? Uh, but it's really actually very surprising. So our federal government, um, has anybody heard about the JEDI program? No? Um, so you can Google it, it's in the news. So the JEDI program is the Department of Defense uh, would really like to award a single cloud provider a $10 billion contract, right? And so, and to move all their stuff into the cloud. But their real goal is they want to pick a cloud provider because they want to get into things like AI and all these things so that they can be smarter, quicker, faster. Um, it was supposed to be awarded soon. It was going to be super cool. Um, and then our president got involved. And uh, so now it's delayed, right? Because he's not an Amazon fan. So, so we'll see how that plays out. <laughs> But I say that because it's super interesting to the news. If you want to follow the drama, there's lots of interesting articles about how that came to be and the people involved. And, um, it's, it's really cool read. Um, but either regardless the JEDA gets awarded or not, it's super surprising how fast our government, um, both federal and even the city of Phoenix, how fast they're moving to the cloud um, for all the reasons I talked about, right? So efficiencies, all of this. Um, let's see. I think that's most of what I had to talk about. You all didn't ask a lot of questions, and I talk fast, so um, let's see. Um, I'm going to have a quick video, and then um, the last thing I'll talk about, I, you all may or may not know this, but ASU actually in the Skysong um, space has launched a partnership with um, Amazon Web Services, and they are down there uh, focused on working through uh, prototypes and concepts and ideas on how to uh, leverage um, the cloud to enable some of these smart city concepts or even smart can type of concepts. So um, I think they're down there on the last day. Super friendly, I think, if you want to check them out. Uh, oh. Gonna take a second to load. Oh yeah, you want to pause it? Yeah. I'll ask questions like pause it. Okay, so we are going to uh, show one more video. It's gonna wrap up hopefully everything I've been talking about in a three minute video. And then I'm going to turn it over to Jade, and she's going to talk a little bit more about. She's going to talk a little bit more about boy and recruiting and how we can all get connected. But um, that's kind of the end of the seminar. What we want to talk about? Any questions? Who decides what's best? Is that a concern? Who decides what's best in what way? So what's best in, you know, when I talk about designing for the citizen, what's best as far as what technology we're going to use to do what things. Um, so let's say like safety. If, how do we decide that um, filming you in public spaces so that we can identify if you're carrying a weapon is best? Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's the dilemma, right? Yeah. So, 
then it's three questions. So this question is, you know, how is it done? Is it our government and it should be that government and everybody is involved. So there's lots of ways they do that, right? Government will solicit feedback, they'll ask for things. So there's a little, there's a little, uh, it's a little bit of a two-way street here, right? Because if you're a citizen and you're walking through life oblivious to what's going on around you and you're not involved, then you won't be involved. So even if they, even if they ask for feedback and solicitation, whether it's in a town hall or some kind of survey, or I know the city of Gilbert, they'll ask for feedback on things they're doing. Um, on their Facebook page, but you know, if you're not involved and you're not in the know, then you might, you know, decisions are made without people all the time because you're not proactive on them. So there's no way to make you, I guess, I mean, no way to make you as a citizen, you know, get involved in the situation. So in lieu of that, they will make decisions without you, right? So maybe that's what is that? Yeah. So that's maybe a plug, right? As you all, as you grow up and be professionals and you know have careers and families and stuff, right? Don't forget to be involved in, in government and um, voting, right? Because your vote counts at all levels. Right? We all vote at the highest level sometimes, but not. Not we never know what city governments are maybe doing. Um, so it's kind of like they are doing a lot of stuff, whether you know it or not. Yeah. In contracting business, would it be morally like? Are you morally obligated to review what you're given, and do you ever, uh, you know, turn down a project because you feel like it has moral ambiguity? Or project yet or you know might not be correct for the community um so i think yes to all that so i know for us you know every every company has its own culture um we definitely turn down um, projects uh, if we don't if, you know if, if the powers that be you know our executives don't think it's the right thing to do as an employee i think you also have a voice right so we we have a culture internally of you know raise your hand you know speak up um and so we encourage people to do don't be on a project if you don't believe in it. But we, we try and uh, everything we do is about our brand and our reputation. So we, we're pretty careful not to get into things that would be, you know, maybe considered morally or ethically uh, not, not a good thing. I don't know if those teams dynamic from the sense that you're working on different teams on different projects all the time or is it more yeah. of you uh, or Yeah, so um, big question. This question was, are the teams dynamic that you're working in different spaces, places, different things? So, you know, we are, uh, as Jade said, we're a large organization. So even our even our delivery center here, we have to work with three of them. There's about 3,000 people. So we're kind of, we have, well, we have, you know, different groups, right, portfolios. Um, and the way that we work is you as a professional within Deloitte would go project to project. So you might do this project for six months, like Google year, and do this project. So does that, does that help? Yeah. Yeah. It's a complicated place, so I won't try and wait a lot of that. Let me pile one thing on top of that. So I spent a long time in industry before I went to consulting, and so it is a 90 day difference going back and forth between the two. Um, stand up. Stand up. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't totally got to stand up for this one. Yeah. Um, I spent a long time in industry, so I sat in a desk and in an office for 10 years doing the same job for a period after period, designing the same kind of things, working in the automotive industry. And you get very used to just make that kind of daily grind. Consulting is a bit different in the fact that, like Andy said, Andy spent his entire career in consulting and your periods are much shorter. You always have that kind of refresh cycle of what's the new technology coming down, um, what's going to be the next project you're working on, what's new after, what can we use. That keeps it exciting and you're always looking at new ways of solving problems where in industry I always found it's like, we've done it this way, we'll continue to do it this way. Consultants are going to come in and they're going to say, that's great. You've done it this way. Here's a new way, a new approach, a new solution. Let's go after it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to know if you find that to be better to work with the local government or the federal government, or things that need to be pushing cities or need to be funded. Um. I don't know. Do you have an opinion? You want to you want to go first? Yeah, I can kind of think about that. So. Um, without getting into a lot of politics, you have a division between the federal and the state governments on how things are going to operate. Mm -hmm. And your state governments are going to have more impact on their local environments first, right? Because they're going to be the ones that are going to say, these are our rules here. And it's going to vary state by state on how you do things. Um, Google bought Nest. And so the Nest thermostats, and now we get Nest cams and everything else. When they first bought Nest, there was 
an issue where they were talking about outlawing them in the city of Palo Alto because people would be able to detect when you were raising your temperatures and you might not be home. And so people were like, oh, am I going to be able to go rob this house? They just raised the temperature. Nobody's going to be there. So the city of Palo Alto got involved in that first, right? Where the federal government has not said, hey, we're going to go ahead and give you incentives to you know, use a smart thermostat that lowers the energy. That's going to actually come off the city of So things like IoT, I expect them to come probably more from the city and state first. And then it's going to be a ways out of place where the federal government really put the mandates on things. Yeah. I think um, I think my answer would be it depends on the project, yeah. right? We work with so many different agencies and everybody spends the project. I think the federal government, um, because Department of Defense, Army, Navy, yeah. Air Force, you can imagine they're doing cooler things than your state and local governments. So, so I'm always more about hey, what's the cool project I can work on, what can I learn to do? Um, okay, anybody else? Um, yeah. Hey, Jane, I don't think we could play that maybe just as people are walking out. Do you want to do your thing first and then we'll yeah. close and let it play? Sure. I think you're getting close to time. Basically, I just wanted to explain what I handed out to you guys. Um, so let me go back to the PowerPoint really quickly. So, um, these are the events. If you're interested in talking to me after this, it's totally fine. Obviously, you have the practitioners here as well. They'll have the day to day and what it's really like. But these are the events that I'm going to be at. If you want, to, if you're going to be there, that's where I'll be. Um, if you want to learn more, there's a QR code on there where it's updated as you go, you're checking in, and I'll send you more information about the USBC, how to apply, things that are relevant to your major, things like that. If you are interested in applying, the deadline is September 29th at 11 p.m. If you apply beforehand, don't expect me to reach out to you. I have to go through my own process, um, so I know you guys are excited. Um, and then this is how to apply. I know it's annoying, but you do have to go through all of these to be considered. If you only do one, I'll reach out to you to say you have to do the other two as well, okay? Does that make sense? Any questions about that? And then on the back is basically all of the profiles that we are hiring for in consulting. Um, so there is a lot. I have tiny URLs for all, because you all are seniors, correct? Right? Okay. So I have all the uh, full time tiny URLs there. If you could like direct me to the job descriptions on Deloitte.com or Handshake, whatever you're using. Um, so you're, you'll be able to see if it's actually something that you're interested in. And my contact information is on there too. So if you want to do a quick call, question, feel free to do that. Um, but that's just the general overview about what we're looking for. Okay. Any questions about anything? Yeah. And there's internship opportunities as well on the on the back of the page. And then just a reminder, if you guys actually want more information, sign in on the QR code that I handed out to you. I also have an iPad up here if you want, if it's not working for you. I have backup and more flyers as well. Other than that, I will play the video. Yeah, so we'll play our video on the way out. If you guys want to talk to us afterwards, um, feel free to stick around. We'll yeah. be here for a while. So. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Hi. Yeah, he was up front, and I was walking through his like conductor thing. Yeah, sorry, we didn't place it. So okay. yeah, I had him write his email down. <laughs> okay. On this. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure yeah. I have the right. Oh, I yeah. turned the volume down. <laughs> <laughs> this is a city. This is a small city.